Hey guys, when you're watching this, <clears throat> Blade Show will be going on. So I know you're probably expecting some type of Blade Show coverage or some new knives or something like that. But today, I'm going to talk to you guys about a conversation I had with some of my buddies. And then I just so happened to go back and um, you know how YouTube will autoplay videos. And I happened to run across on autoplay one of Triple B Handmaid's um, or Big, Bra Big Brown Bear's videos where he talks about the same exact thing and he talked about it months ago. So I'll link that down below um, because he probably does a ton better job than I'm going to do here today. But just, just something that hit my mind and obviously something that uh, Big Brown Bear, which, you know, he's he knows the steals. He's, he, that's his thing. So obviously um, not something that's a new concept to, to people, but it just hit my mind. So I've got all these knives laying out here. Um, you know, here is something in Z-Ware, if I can get it to focus. Z-Ware, you've got the steel that seems to be ubiquitous nowadays. You've got this 20 CV. You've got uh, some CPM 154. Again, if I get it to focus. And then you've got some good old Cyclops Steelworks 440 from GEC. So, you know, something something you, you always hear people talking about. You know, you guys and all these fancy steels and I can't get an edge on that stuff. I don't super super steels are silly and what do you guys even need that stuff for? Uh, this this 440C right here sharpens up easy. I can get an edge in, in five minutes. Uh, doesn't even doesn't even take me long. It's easy to sharpen, stays sharp as long as I need it to stay sharp and does exactly what I need it to do. These super steels are crazy and you can't even sharpen them. Uh, you know, how, how many times have we heard, you know, certain steels are impossible to sharpen? Well, as, as Big Brown Bear talks about, there isn't any steel that's impossible to sharpen. It really comes down to what tools you have available, your skill level, and your frame of reference. If you are used to sharpening something that's pretty soft like this on an Arkansas stone, or nowadays a lot of people are using some form of ceramics like this uh, double stuff from Spyderco, which is fine. It, there's nothing wrong with this. As you can see, I obviously use this stone, but your frame of reference is on a fairly soft steel and you're using uh, abrasives that are not necessarily the most aggressive. So if you try to sharpen something, and I don't have a great example of that here, but if you try to sharpen something like this 20 CV and you've already let it get super dull, it, it, it's there's no edge, just butter knife dull, and then you try to hit it on something like this uh, fairly fine ceramic stone or some of your uh, Arkansas stones, you're not going to have that same level of aggression. And if you add to that the fact that you don't you don't necessarily have the best technique, you're you're going to have an even more difficult time. So I think a lot of times when we hear about uh, super steels being silly and why do you need that steel and you can't sharpen them and this that and the other. I think that we need to take into consideration the frame of reference and the tools and the skill uh, being utilized in those sharpenings. Uh, and not, not this is not against anybody in particular, but um, I just think that we need to frame uh, our conversations a little bit. And like I said, you hear that a lot. I know you guys have heard it about super steels, about all the complications and why do we even need them? And you know, 440C did my granddaddy fine and you know, all that kind of stuff, which is true. And, and some people, they want something that they can just run on a strop or they can just, you know, uh, take five seconds on the bottom of a coffee mug or something like that and sharpen it up, get, get that edge back to, to hair sharp. Um, but we have better steels available. So, you know, they're out there. Why not? Why not use them? The, the thing is, the, the, the more advanced the steel, the more advanced your abrasives need to be. You really need to be stepping up to, and I've got my Wicked Edge right in front of me, you need to be stepping up to some diamond abrasives, you know? So, or, or some, something of the equivalent, but nine times out of 10, uh, you know, it's common that guys are using diamond abrasives, DMTs, things of that nature. So you need something that's gonna match the steel that you're sharpening. So just a little idea I had and something I wanted to put out there. You guys tell me what your thoughts are because I know I have a good number of traditional knife guys that watch that do prefer 1095 or 440 or some of the more basic steels. And like I said, that, there's nothing against that. Um, I just, I think we put a lot of, of narratives out there and I think they can be misleading to people if they, they 
if, if they're not framed correctly. And like I said, it, how many times have we heard these super steels are impossible to sharpen, they're silly, um, I can't get an edge on them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So keep in mind the skill level, the tools utilized, and the uh, comfort zone of the sharpener if they're coming from sharpening something soft like this on something that's not very abrasive like a ceramic stone or uh, certain Arkansas stones. Uh, also, and you guys can look back at last week's video about the HRC, the Rockwell Hardness Conversation, um, sometimes that factors in with sharpening your knives as well. You'll hear people say that certain steels feel gummy or sticky on a, on a stone. Uh, so we, we're also seeing some issues with sharpening due to the way the steel has been prepared. So just something I wanted to put out there. Love to hear your, your thoughts on this, guys. Comment down below. If you're at Blade, I hope you're having a blast. If you're not, hopefully this gives you a little bit of entertainment. Remember, a lazy man carries a dull knife.